Yes. Okay. Scott will be taking his Thorazine and it'll be in soon. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our last panel. Oh, no. Aww. Aww. I, well, I, I didn't hear you. <laughs> So many familiar faces, yeah, and yeah. you know we've only been here a couple days, but we've got to you know speak to people and get to know you guys a little bit more, and it's just it's so wonderful for us to meet you all and get a chance to talk to you and, and just spend time with you. So thank you for treating us so well, yeah, and it's been great. Uh, thank you to you guys. Thank you. To you guys. This is this is true. I was walking to the to the green room like this, and somebody stops me and they say, "Are you cosplaying Charlie Sheen?" <laughs> so they're all uh, well. I do have plenty of. I say no, but I am two and a half men. <laughs> Thomas spit tick. Right I know. There. Oh, I wish. That would have been bad. That would have been. That probably would have sprayed out all over us. Yeah. yeah. Right. And we'll get. Been, we'll get wet on this ride. But she's got a helmet on, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got wipers on her visor, which is awesome. I love it. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's. Right. It, what have you been dying to ask? It's the last time you can ask us this year. This is time for all the silly, crazy, whacked out, no holds barred. What do you want to know? Yeah. Um, you probably already answered this, I'm assuming, but do you know what's going on with Helsing Ultimate Volume 5 in America? Uh, as far as Helsing Ultimate goes, we have recorded 5, 6, 7, and 8. All the episodes are in the can. I've even recorded commentary tracks for at least one of the episodes. I can't remember if we did two or one, but we did record commentary tracks. So at this point, it's up to mixing, uh, duplication, distribution, all that stuff. So it's all up to whatever Funimation's production schedule is. But they're all done, so hopefully they will be coming out sooner rather than later. Well, they of have every different show ever made. Well, you, you would think. Uh, but you know, they want to give limelight to a couple of the other actors here and there. Mm -hmm. Want to come to the commentary? I'd love to. Okay. I'd love to. Can I do it as Charlie Sheen? In fact, you must. Winning! Yeah. Uh, uh, have you guys seen Fantastic Mr. Fox? And if so, what would you do if someone actually put a bandit hat on? I have seen Fantastic Mr. Fox. And what was the second part of that? What would you do if someone asked you to put a bandit hat on? Would you put it on? Sure, why not? If there's a paycheck involved, I'll do it. <laughs> Yeah, you're not sneaking in, man. You can't sneak in. Yes. Look, everyone, it's Johnny Youngwash. What? <laughs> what? I've been here all along. <laughs> I've just escaped the zombie apocalypse. I know you did it like like, like the Asian <laughs> pronunciation, didn't you? We're talking about the the accent you put on uh, Johnny, Johnny, Young Johnny Young Bosch. Johnny Young Bosch. Johnny Young Bosch. Johnny Young Bosch. Is it? Johnny Young Bosch. Quickly to the internet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But everyone knows it's a very next. concise direction. Yes. I appreciate it. You make my job easy. I don't know. <laughs> Does anyone have any? I mean, we, you got, most of you, I have familiar faces. You've seen all of our panels. Is there anything we have not answered for you that you are curious about or would like to know? Yeah. Did you buy the hat? I bought the hat. Yay! I bought this leather give her, give her. steampunk hat that's just sort of a. a <clears throat> a short top, shortish, medium top hat, and they put the feather on, and it's just, it's to die for. It looks marvelous. Yeah. 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 Yeah
that. Can I get a picture of that later? Uh, it's all wrapped up. Oh. Ready for the I actually ride. have a picture of her in it, actually. Yes! Nice. <laughs> well, without the feather, they put the feather on. I was like, oh, what was I even thinking about that other hat? I'm crazy! <laughs> yeah, I love the dealer room. I have to tell you, I've got three t-shirts. I just, I love, I always love coming to cons to stock up on wacky t-shirts and, and, and awesome. The Walking now, Dead. That's the Walking Dead, and the, the Nostromo, and then they had a great one, you know, the old game Operation? Well, they had a knight who say me oh, on it who says, I'm not dead yet, so it was, him in the operation game. Oh, yeah. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. All of a sudden, I'm from, I don't know, Wisconsin. Yeah, it's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, for those who have the opportunity to get your signatures, will you be able to, like, if we, if we give you something to sign, I'm sure you'll be able to submit it just for that. Unfortunately, Crispin and I have got to run to catch a plane right after this. Yeah, so. we go straight to the airport. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I was sorry. just putting my, my badge sign and stuff in it. There you go. Three? 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 Most a touching or emotional story you've ever heard from a fan? Wow. Oh. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> we actually we meet a lot of we meet a lot of men and women uh, in the service, uh, and this one guy was on leave and he was getting ready to go back to Afghanistan, and I was signing Ghost in the Shell stuff and Silent Hill stuff for him so that he could take it back the guys uh, in Afghanistan the next day, and he ended up giving me the, their badge from, uh, and I just burst into tears, and I was, I was oh, so We should moved. do like a USO show or something, yeah. we should all go and do something like that, they, yeah. you know, they're fans of this stuff, we really should definitely should, do this. So grateful. We have to sing Andrew's sister songs. Yes, yes, you do. I get to be Maxine. <laughs> <laughs> you already are Maxine. It's not a Canadian military anyway. Come on, drop it. Only got one guy, but he's the best sniper in the world. What was that glowing red dot on your forehead? What? We don't share that. Charlie Sheen. How about you, Scott? Um. I've had, I honestly have, you know, in a moment of rare sincerity, I've had, you know, people, why do you do cons? You know, why do you just like, you know, A, I don't do a lot of them, B, because, it, uh, you know, I love you guys, but I've had experiences right from the very first convention I did, which was, which was a transport of BotCon in 1999, and people have shared amazing stuff, you know, with me, with us, you know, of, you know, of lives that have had really, really crappy things happen. And then they have gone on to say, you know, how how watching some of what we do, you know, has gotten them through things. Or uh, uh, Kelsey of her little brother, who had spent the last six months of his life in palliative care, you know, at the age of like twelve, and eventually passed away from uh, I can't remember what form of cancer. But how, you know, it was watching Gundam Wing that that enabled him to. I've, received letters from parents, or I've spoken to parents. I will never forget a woman, um, she had come up to me, and I had spent, you know, because it's me wandering around being random. And she went and told me that uh, her daughter, who I'd been chatting with for like the last hour, she went and, um, you know, my little girl through a, a really amazing tale of circumstance and how this came about, but had been diagnosed with profound unipolar depression, and da da da, and she went, seeing you when you were talking to my daughter, you know, and, and we're in sort of a position where if we go, you know what, I think your artwork is amazing, I think you're beautiful, I think you're, sometimes people listen. <laughs> and she said, that is the first time in four years that I have seen my little girl smile. You know, stuff like that, and it happens a lot. I've had a couple of experiences at this con where people have come up and just, you know, and I've been able to, you know, for whatever my schmucky Canadian brain can come up with, but, you know, and, and even just in, Concept of uh, what we do, you know. I've been doing I've been doing cartoons for oh, well over a decade before I ever did a convention. 
you know, and you think, you know, it's like, ah, I go in and do my thing, we do the job, you know, it's in their work, no heavy lifting, fine point, I go home and I take out the garbage. It's very anonymous. <laughs> and finding out the impact of some of what we do, of, of what we do as, you know, as performers or as they're making these shows, and discovering that this stuff really can have an impact on people. You know, and it's very humbling. It's weirdly humbling. And, it, and you go, okay, you know what, I'm just going to goof around in there. Was, so, I mean, I really have a million stories where I have just broken down and wept at cons because people share. And, you know, <laughs> we're a bunch of narcissistic actors. We don't know from sharing anyway. Because <laughs> cool stuff happens. Like this. How about you, Chris? It is surprising when someone comes up, or you've been interacting with someone, and you have no idea what the history is behind that sort of interaction. The interaction seems every day. And then you get done, and someone comes up and says, I'm so glad you talked to my daughter. She's been fighting with cancer her entire life. And you play the character that means the most thing in the world to you. And you go, if I had known, I would have. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I would have done. I would have done probably exactly what I did, which was talk to her like a human being, because she wanted to talk to this person who helped bring her character to life. Um, being able to, from my perspective, to being able to contribute to stories that can mean that much to someone is extremely satisfying, because it means I, I fell in love with acting not because I liked being on stage. I fell in love with acting because I love being backstage. I love being part of making the illusion and seeing how everything worked and going, ooh, from the front, it looks like this. But from the back, this is how we make it work. Oh, this is fascinating. And people seem to like it. And so when, when, you, when you do something like that and it goes beyond just, uh, it was entertainment, it distracted me for a while, I laughed, to this story means something to me. I carry this story with me. I, I can glean wisdom or meaning from this story in different phases of my life, and you helped make it happen, voice actor or creator or writer or director or whoever you are. What greater praise can there be than that? Yeah, great question. You had one. Good question. Yeah. Um, I have a request. Um, I've got to hug you twice so far. I've got to pictures. If there's one thing I need to get. I want to get, I've gotten hugs, I've gotten pictures with you, but there's one thing I want to get that I have not yet. I want to get an autograph, you can sign it, have anything, I just thought of something. I've been getting a lot of compliments online. Um, oh no. On my autobot sticker on the back of my scooter. Would you feel the sign? I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I need, and this is a camera moment, excuse me, hold on. <laughs> I have a question for Mary Elizabeth and a question for Crispin. Um, since you said you're catching up, I don't know if it's about time to do that thing that we talked about, and if not, that's okay. Yeah. But if you can, like really quickly after it's over, just like two seconds, it's up to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. okay. But serious question for you, since you have such a passion for mythology and it makes me really happy. Um, Vampire Hunter D, since it's sent so way far in the future and it takes like Western mythology of all those monsters and it mixes it with like the Japanese perspective on it. And yet they set it in like 12,090 AD so that they can get away with anything. What do you think of that type of setting? I, I do find it interesting when you set something in the future and you do things that are sort of anachronistic with it, um, like Firefly, you know? So yeah, it's, it's sort of interesting. It, it, it depends. It, it can be tough, because sometimes it strains credulity, because you go, why would they use that if they have this kind of technology? Um, why do you use horses that are robotic when you could use motorcycles or so? You know, you know. But the, but there's something very charming about it, um, and and because it appeals to our um, it appeals to our nature of fantasy. Uh, Miyazaki said when he was making the film Pocoroso, which is about the flying pig in his, in his boats, 
He said he very specifically said it in the 30s in the Adriatic, because after that, planes started getting, the design of planes started getting much more aerodynamically based and less artistically based. Back in the 30s, planes still looked artistic. They still had a flair to them. It's like the fins on the cars in the 50s and 60s, you know? Mm -hmm. And Khrushchev comes over and goes, what are those for? And I go, I don't know. But it's, they're, they're pretty. And, uh, it's old style. Yeah, it's old style. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I, I do appreciate that about the vampire hunter view, uh, especially the sort of futuristic world like that, that you're, you're sort of doing sci-fi gothic, I guess. Um, that's a very fun place to play. Doctor Who does that a lot. I think Doctor Who is most successful when it's when it's sort of sci-fi gothic horror mystery. You know, you basically got a sci-fi Sherlock Holmes with a sonic screwdriver. Cool. <laughs> um, and uh, so I think I think that can be a lot of fun. I think it's great. That's it. Come on. Yeah. Okay, this is for everyone. Do you guys watch any abridged series, and if so, what? <laughs> oh, you know. Uh, yes, I have seen the Abridged series of Helsing, uh, the Helsing episode one and two Abridged series, and the Helsing episode one Abridged had me peeing my pants. <laughs> it was quite, quite funny. So I, I do think that that's very funny. I have not seen any other Bridge series. That one, that one was brought to my attention by uh, one, of my, uh, one of my voice acting students, actually. She was like, you got to see this. <laughs> I was like, OK, that's some funny stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> I would admit it. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting to get television in Canada. <laughs> it's the interwebs. It's a series of tubes. <laughs> we'll see it all there. Oh, we've heard the rumors. <laughs> We're waiting. As soon as the Canucks win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> Wait, if you don't know the internet is, how do you know the internet is? <laughs> <laughs> Scott, I call you out, sir. Kings won. LA Kings! Kings <laughs> <laughs> stomped it this year. I was rooting Kings all the way after they kicked our ass. Because <laughs> we're the best team in the league. And then we pick up the paper and the whole team goes, hey, it says we're the best team in the league. We're going to win the Stanley Cup. And then we stand there with our thumbs up our ass. <laughs> <laughs> slides into his face and makes him turn into a moron. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not bitter. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Sunglasses. Okay. You wear your What's the funniest thing a fan has ever Jack given Nicholson you was at this thing. <laughs> What's the funniest thing a fan has ever given you? Oh, man. <laughs> We will bring things of sugar, chocolate, and strangeness. Somebody gave me a fresh cucumber wrapped in plastic. At least I hope it was plastic, and I hope it was a cucumber. <laughs> that I've signed every year for five years straight. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I'm six, you can eat it. Yeah. <laughs> just start to soften up that. <laughs> Post-apocalyptia, when the Twinkies breed with the cockroaches. <laughs> scurrying, sentient Twinkies. They'll be cream-filled and yummy. It's protein on the outside. It's the stink. It's the stink. <laughs> See, isn't that better? I was getting claustrophobic just watching it. <laughs> I was getting high step It's like it started fogging up a little. I was getting costume phobic, actually. Yes. <laughs> just coined a new word. Nobody gives a crap. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, you and the rest. What was the weirdest thing someone asked you to sign? That some fan asked you to sign? Someone <laughs> I don't know how you sign a needle. 
<laughs> well, you know what? It was my fault for incorrect usage of language. But uh -huh. so it was, and it was I, really, I can actually time. feel your aura radiating this way when I said needle, and I should have utilized the term syringe. Oh, okay. So let's that. You felt his aura radiating. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Yeah, laughs> don't you? <laughs> signing stuff and this woman came up to me and she had very large uh, <laughs> <laughs> very, very large they're getting bigger as I tell the story <laughs> she said would you sign my boob <laughs> my boob uh, she wanted me to sign her boob the boob <laughs> anyway I turned to my I said well you're gonna have to ask my wife if it's okay and so she asked my wife, and my wife's like looking her up and down like she's filthy and going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go, I go to sign it, and the weird thing was I realized I'm holding the bottom of it. <laughs> Tattoo on her arm, and she wanted me to sign my signature below it, and then she was gonna have my signature tattooed to her arm. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, okay, I mean, if you really want, you want my signature on your arm, and she loves it. She thinks it's fantastic. And, and your soul stapled to her brain. Yes. <laughs> and then there's a picture. She came back and took a picture of me with it and everything. It's um, it's quite. I mean, the, the tattoo is unbelievable. It's this full color tattoo of Alucard. It's just. Ridiculously detailed, it must have hurt. <laughs> now that's an excessive fan, don't you think? Oh, those are excessive fans. Come on, Scott, now you've had one of those. Yeah, I've actually expressly forbidden people because I have signed a number of people in places <laughs> from a strictly me medical point of view. <laughs> but, and, you know, people have said, I'm going to say, no. No, 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 this is not right. There is actually a woman here who had me do a random doodle of like the word, you know, like the mom, heart, Jane, anchor, you know. And then I received a picture of via Facebook and she was here and I'm like. <laughs> Random Doodle. <laughs> Random Doodle. Random Doodle. Random Doodle. 
to raise money, awareness for all, anyway. So, Matt, it's like, Matt's like, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> if ever, Dave rejoins Van Halen, Dave, we're totally going, Dave, yeah, yeah. So, David Lee Roth rejoins Van Halen, it's like four years ago or something, and he's like, okay, we're going, because I saw him in 77. The <laughs> movie where I completely patterned my entire character after the so, We go, we're there, the concert's over, and you know, I happen to be wearing the hat. And happened to be wearing, you know, just random concerts. But there was these two young gals, both wearing poison shirts. And, you know, I've been to a lot of cons. I know the look. You see? <laughs> you know, we're up in the blues. The concert's over. We had a great time at this thing. Just like rock it up. Um, but I'm going, oh, geez, Maddie. <laughs> Like, oh, so they come over and say, excuse me, you know, it's like, are you? But it's like, no, 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 no. Sort of walking over and say, we own NASA. No, 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 <laughs> and it just, you know, at that point, there was no way to not continue, so, you know, there's pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but if you say no, then it makes them feel stupid. And at this point, I already feel like an asshole. So. <laughs> Besides, me, Brett Michael still his look for me. <laughs> That's almost a true story, too, because I was saying yesterday, when I started doing this, all of the stuff we were recording was at Studio Cup Little Mountain Sound in Vancouver, and that was where... Aerosmith's Pump, uh, Bon Jovi's Slipper Will Win, all of these top, pop, you know, sort of really big comeback albums from these guys were recorded, so every day. And I used to, so we, I remember sitting in the lobby jamming with Poison. Because they were in recording on whichever one, and yeah. <laughs> I swear to God, Ed Michaels with his crew guy looked at me A partially true story. <laughs> Crazy. But it's a good thing you signed it because they would have walked with it. That guy's an asshole. Well, I, didn't actually sign it. I never signed anything because oh. that would be forgery to me yeah, in my little right. Canadian are, are consciousness. But there were some pictures taken. Yeah. And I never did say, yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, I'm the red shirt. Ultimate. So, uh, my friend had a uh, question about some of the commentary that you guys do, especially when things are going like really crazy. Uh, are you reading off anything or is it all coming off the top of your head? Top? I read nothing. <laughs> I don't read. Um, I don't certain book. Top of your head. Yeah. Talking when it comes up. Yeah. We don't have the alphabet yet. Yeah. <laughs> we do, but it's 50 letters and it's metric and it's. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all on stone. I just wanted to tell you is there something in your profession or otherwise that you really want to do yet that you haven't been able to? And if so, you know, what, what would it be? I know you direct, you do music, you do, you know, what, what is it you look, you're looking forward to? 
I would like to direct George Clooney. <laughs> and by direct, into your bedroom. Oh, okay. Did you do <laughs> specific exercises? <laughs> a warm up session? Uh, a pre lay, as it were? Oh. That's what that means! <laughs> <laughs> ah, self discovery. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No. <laughs> Charlie Sheen. <No. laughs> Scott McHale. It's got time. <laughs> Come on. George Mike. Uh, Matt Mike. Sean Michaels. <laughs> 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 With my spare time? <laughs> All my copious free time. Yes. <laughs> I would like to. Uh, I would like to star in films. That's what I would like to do. And a, or, a, or a TV series, something like that. I would like to do more of that. I've done some of it, but I'd like to do a lot more of that. They were looking for a replacement. Ah. <laughs> I think I'm a little tall for the show. <laughs> I want to make an album. There you go. Yeah, I want to make an album. I've been talking to Troy Baker and Knock It Out, and we're thinking of doing an album. So. Yeah, you should. Is that, oh. Is that before or after you should have George? It's, well, there'll be pre lay and right. post lay and <laughs> for the next pre lay. Yes. And then Most eventually. Uh, it's funny, when I came to LA, I wanted to work with the people who worked on Cowboy Bebop, and I got to do that. And I wanted to work on a Miyazaki film, and I've got to do that twice. Um, so in terms of the voice acting world, I'm, there's no, nothing like that, there's no carrot out there that I'm looking for. I'm eager to see what comes up next. Um, what I'm really excited about now is my mythology stuff, and I'd really love to make that into a documentary series. Um, so that would be, yeah. That would be. the next Joseph Exactly. Imagine mm -hmm. Carl Sagan crossed with Joseph Campbell, and there we go. In a hot bar at Christmas Freeman. Yeah. 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 Let me tell you about mythology. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, you teach, when you teach, you find Sorry, that there's some women that are just like Indiana Jones. It's like, love you. <laughs> <laughs> like, so anyway, I, the... Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I do get that. You know, I'll give like a ninety-minute lecture. I go, any questions? And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and I go, good. I'm glad you understood everything. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. Scott. Brett, I mean Scott. Is <laughs> my gazing adorably crispy? <laughs> <laughs> all across. Uh, I'm like purely artistically. I've been really, like I've done a lot of stuff that's strange. Yeah, but artistically, not the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, yes, I want to learn to play the cello. I want to learn to play the banjo. You know, I've been employed as, as a dancer. I've been a mine, my five. Well, I signed on Broadway and then turned it down, which turned out to be the best decision of my life. Have you been to Paradise? But it's I've never, never been to you. By the dashboard lights. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the Transformers Hall of Fame twice. I was inducted. It was like Michael Bay, Steven Spielberg, and me. Wow. Cool. <laughs> you know, you just don't have to get recognized. Uh, I did a, uh, an animated oh, film or an animated, uh, called uh, Sword of the Stranger. Oh, and if yes. anybody saw that, which is all three of them, <laughs> it was nominated for an Oscar, Best Animated Picture. It was going up against Pixar, so of course it did. Yeah, yeah. But I went and did it. I have a pod with some big role in it. Can me a room? Did it by the party. <laughs> God, there's always a million things. That, uh, if, you, if you're in any way, shape, or form able, or to put it more accurately with me, unable to not express yourself and all that. You know, I've said about when I to play the guitar this year, because I've been working with a bunch of different bands, and frankly, after a while, I quite feel stupid standing in the front doing nothing when you guys are having all the fun back there playing me. Um, I don't know. I'm going to go to space with Mary Elizabeth. Space. Yes! Space! Space! It will happen. I don't know.
window when? Mary so. in space. We'll return after this. <laughs> Jump out of a plane again next weekend, but I don't know with my ankle whether or not. Yeah, I yeah, no, no. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, still be me up. Did you really stick the landing with that one? Yeah. Or did you stick that landing? <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. I was going to say, could you each do an impersonation of someone else on the panel? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes go. Uh, we did the the the, uh, the, 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 the uh, X Files episode, and Gillian Anderson yeah. came in and played Gillian Anderson. Of mm -hmm. course, Mr. Duchovny was busy complaining about the rain, so <laughs> so I was fax mode. First of all, they're going, "Okay, we need you to do. You know, can you do Duchovny?" I was like, oh, "I've never seen X Files." <laughs> so I watched it. Was like, you know, how to do as a cartoon character a man who. Does nothing yeah. as an actor, so I'm just you know I'd be like, what do you mean? Like yeah, yeah, we get to 
stuff for my sister. <laughs> anyway, that when I went in audition for Beast Wars, which was the next show that uh, that Mainframe was doing, went in audition for everything, blah 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 blah, callback after callback, callback after callback. Then okay, you know, final callback. You're in for these characters. This. Uh, the executives from Mattel and all of the people in suits, which is just where things get nightmarish in a cartoon. You're like, oh, fuck, I hate people in suits! <laughs> uh, in the book I read about comedy, it says here that... So I go in, and sure enough, it's this room. And these are, you know, fairly young people, and they're all very buttoned down, and, you know, so da, 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 and I go in and I do my stuff, and I'm shooting all these characters, you know, like, right here. And they go, oh, uh, yeah, that was very interesting, Scott. Uh, uh, listen, um, I was wondering if, if you could answer a question for us. Uh, in the, you worked on the Ringling series, so yeah, we said it. And uh, yeah, we were wondering if you could tell us uh, who played the character of Fax Modem in the other uh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can tell you. That was me. And they went, dude, that was freaking you! That was me! Next day, I get a phone call. Yeah, you booked three of the leads on that show. <laughs> Costumes can be weird because stuff like that happens. <laughs> Giant, like, scary men will suddenly turn into four year olds when they fight, you know, and then everyone's going, Do the hell this looking drug dealer man? <laughs> 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 Do like it. <laughs> you wear your hat when you record? I have a special recording hat. <laughs> I do not, because it can get weird. I yeah. don't wear this. Yes, you do. <laughs> 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 you know, this he so sleeps in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's do you watch the hat? riveted to the top of my head to cover up my horrifying birth defect after the weed eating accident where I actually have no top to my skull. Danny, <laughs> 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 you lovely image. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Uh, I had a weird going yeah. through that one. <laughs> <laughs> That one question they were talking about the weird when people recognize you in weird situations. Oh, yeah. I was going through, you know, the TSA thing at the airport, and all of a sudden I heard Mr. Epcar, and I like look up and he says, "Come here," and I thought, "Oh crap, I gotta go through the whole hat down all this stuff." He takes me over, he goes, "I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> Will you sign some stuff for me?" And I like, sign all this guy. I go, "Wow, that's bizarre." I mean, he just he just heard me say something to somebody next to me, and he just said, "You know, he, re he just recognized my voice," and that was that was kind of cool actually. So that was fun. I was visiting my family in Montana, uh, near Bozeman, Montana. Yeah, and there's a big Michaels uh, arts and crafts store in Bozeman. Red Michaels. I'm in like crappy sweatshirt and jeans. It's raining. I've got these big ugly glasses on. It starts raining. I jump in my little SUV, I close the door, I'm gonna get ready to leave, and there's this on the window. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Bozeman's a population of what? Two hundred? Two hundred? Yeah, no. Like, you know, twenty thousand and it's not that big of a thing. and not not what? Sort of rolling up. Yes? Are you Crispin Freeman? <laughs> yeah? Who wants to know? If I go into Borders and buy a Helsing Mongol, will you sign it for me? Sure. <laughs> How did you find me? <laughs>
Yeah, I can make my eyes focus on two different planes. <laughs> How do you get your eyes, eyes on two different planes? <laughs> 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 you know, look, I'm looking there and looking there. <laughs> George Clooney, do you have any? <laughs> They're these ping pong balls at home. Oh. <laughs> a B-roll, which is a behind-the-scenes role. We, like, this is my third time directing Seriously, Jane. I adore her. I see you two getting along so well. So <laughs> funny. Um, and she, I picked a scene. I, I had to pick some stuff for her to redo as if she was actually doing it live for uh, the camera, for the uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. And there was this great moment where uh, she plays a character who never drinks soda. She's very strict, very follow the rules, follow the rules. And she, the shot is of her drinking soda. She goes, is it done? Is it done? Are we done? I should go slow down on these things. I don't know what it is. And then this big belch came out of her. And I was like, let's do that one. And she goes, by the way, that was me belching. And I said, really? You can belch on command? And she says, yes. <laughs> really? You're soaking? Uh. <laughs> we went back and forth and just belching with Jane Lynch. And I was like, today's bit of silliness that I got paid to do. Belch with Jane Lynch. So, <laughs> that is the greatest thing ever because if some guy hits on you, you know, in a bar or something, you just belch in his face. And <laughs> I have never wanted you more than I want you. <laughs> Sit for Scott. You the opposite effect on him, naturally. You can take the girl out of Jersey, but you can't take the Jersey out of the girl, Bonnaby. <laughs> I participated for years in kayak marathon racing, I'm fully experienced and well-traveled uh, technical scuba diver. I've done 220, 80 tech diving. I'm also a trained chef. Really? Yes, I decided in the last couple of years, that because I've, I've cooked all my life and I'm a very good cook. Yeah. And I went, you know what, there's a lot that I can learn about this. And so I've gone to do a little, you know, just for my recreation, I'm a awesome. trained. As soon as we get spices in Canada, it's going to be fire. That's coming. Matt. They still have to smuggle in paprika. Matt, my love, yes. Oh, yes. What's all for all of you? What's your favorite dessert? I was going to ask that. Two questions. Yes. I, that was not, I just had to do it because I was building up some air, so sorry about that. Last year on. I like I chocolate. A seven. <laughs> I, actually, I'm a savory girl. I, I crave salt at all times, so. Um, You're a savory chocolate. girl? I like savory uh, stuff as opposed to sweet. I thought that was like an organization. I'm a savory girl. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I showed up as a Jägermeister girl, and now I'm a savory girl. <laughs> savory vodka. Yes, savory <laughs> So I love uh, like chocolate with sea salt or caramel with sea salt. I, that's, I like sort of a savory sweet kind of thing. Like. <laughs> 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 what did I do? Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The simplest thing you can do to chocolate to make it amazing is a tiny bit of salt. Yeah. 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 It makes chocolate just explode. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I made the truffles once. You know they're gonna have to do that. Just a little flake of vanilla salt. Just a little dry on the top and pop in and all. And I don't like chocolate. Choco gasm. Fantastic. I do like chocolate. I like chocolate a lot, but I'm trying to think my favorite dessert. God, that's tough. That's hard. I don't know. Charlie Sheen. No. I do like uh, I do like uh, tiramisu. Yeah. Like, uh, brulee, and I do like. No, I, I hate flan. That's funny. I do like creme brulee, but I don't like creme brulee. It's flan, pal. It's flan, it, tastes, it tastes like. Uh, it's not. Um, but it's the same custardy, watch it. It's like mucus to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like a big, big 
vanilla flavored loogie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, that would be my answer to my favorite dessert. So. because they make the crust out of, not regular crust, they make the crust out of coconut. It's unbelievable. So that's my favorite. Um, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for Italian gelato. Yeah. yeah! Especially, I like to mix like coffee type gelato, like a cappuccino cookie, with a fruit sorbet. I don't know why, but it's really good, like the coffee and fruit thing. I, I love it. With just a pinch of salt. 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 Just a I'm not a dessert guy. One of the reasons I went actually through group school. Oh, you know what? I never do. I know nothing about pastry chef. And I'm not much. So, you know, to learn. Up. But here in the great state of Florida, Carlos and crew, when I was in Miami, took me to this amazing Cuban restaurant. It's ridiculous. And the food was stunning. It was spectacular. And I had to say, but it's like, okay, we're gonna have dessert. I'm like, I'm not, that. so I get sort of steered towards this uh, dulce de leche, you know, which is like a thriller. Oh. Anyway, which I've had before, and it's like, it's good. At this place, and I wish I could endorse and remember the name of the restaurant. Babies. I have never, ever had anything no, I can't, you know what, you guys are going to go to the wrong place, but... We're already there. It was... It was, it was, was it in the Forest City? No, it wasn't. Uh, it was Miami. Miami. Oh, Miami, Miami. Yeah, if it was around here, we would have gone last night. <laughs> but I, I just never tasted anything. It was, it was perfect before. I mean, it released every neurochemical that, that becoming insanely in love in a heartbeat did. Yeah. It was partly shtick, but like I was almost crying when I left, and I didn't want to let the plate go. <laughs> you know, and I was actually sort of rebounding from something fairly traumatically emotionally love involved. So you know, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my god, I know this feeling. And it was, it was like, wow, the power of dessert can be strong. <laughs> It was ridiculous. I, I will probably never eat anything that. Did you move in with the dessert? <laughs> I'm Canadian. I'm Canadian. She's Catholic. You found out somebody else, somebody else was eating her. I was the first. Oh, that's how we're going to end this. Why did they turn like that? <laughs> well, sorry, it's sad. It turned out we were related. But. Oh. <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because we're divorced. You're still my sister. <laughs> my way. I'm going. But it was, it was probably the most perfect combination of What thing. was the dessert? It was a dulce de leche, oh, which is, you know, you can get anywhere. You can get, like, you know, don't be... What is it? Nice what's in it? What's involved in it? Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we just want to thank you all so very much for no, treating us thank to you. an amazing convention. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> Very nice to them because none of us would be here if it weren't for them. Yes. Yep. Yeah.